Hey everybody, welcome to another gnarly lesson time. And what I want to do today is talk about iceberg catalogs. So first off, the purpose of an iceberg catalog, think about it is it's the, think of it as like you have a basket. And then in, in like during Easter, you might have a basket of eggs and you carry those eggs in a basket. And you can always find your eggs because they're in your basket. Well, you might have, think of those eggs as iceberg tables. You might have lots of iceberg tables. And you want to take them with you from place to place. So you might want to take them with you from Apache Spark to Dremio to Apache Flink to other tools. Okay. And you want to want to be able to take your bundle of iceberg tables from tool to tool and have them be able to discover the existence of those tables pretty easily. That is the purpose of the iceberg catalog. Okay. So this is a little bit different than other like catalog vendors, which are just more sort of your general data catalogs that track your data in many different places just to sort of help people become aware of what data exists. Uh, this is more of a catalog for engines to know where which iceberg tables you have and where and where to find the metadata. So essentially, every iceberg catalog, in some shape or manner, tracks a list of all your table names. And associated with each table name is a, a, a an absolute file location on where the current metadata.json is for that table. Okay, so that's that's what the main mechanism is. And generally, if you want to build an iceberg data lake house, you do have to start with a catalog, some catalog. Okay, um, luckily, it's much easier to change catalogs later on if you decide you want to use a different one. Um, so bottom line is just to get started, choose a, any catalog, whatever one is sort of the catalog of least resistance at the time. But let's go over some of the many catalogs that are available in the iceberg world. So there is Project Nessie. Okay, so Project Nessie is an open source project that is built to be an iceberg catalog. Now, it's existed a little bit longer than the iceberg rest interface, which is why it doesn't currently implement that. But essentially what it does is that it does uh, it does expose its own open API spec uh, that um, allows you to interact with a service that tracks commits at the catalog level. Now, the beauty of this is that your catalog is the references to all your tables. So when I create branch, when I do branching, do rollbacks, time travel at the catalog level, it is not just doing it at one table at a time, it's doing it all tables. So if, imagine I create a tag for each day's data, instead of me having to, you know, reference that tag for each table, I can just reference that tag, you know, basically set my context to that tag. And then basically all my tables will be operating as if they were at that point. So it, it gives you this sort of catalog level multi-table semantics uh, to get like versioning uh, that can be really useful in a lot of different ways. Okay. Um, so the pros is, again, you get that get like functionality, you get the catalog level rollback, time travel, multi-table transactions. And there is a cloud managed service um, formerly known as Dremio Arctic. Now it's just Dremio's integrated catalog. So now it's just part of Dremio's suite of Lakehouse management features. Um, as part of the Dremio platform. Again, that's if you want the managed service. Again, Project Nessie itself is open source, so you can actually deploy your own Nessie server if you want, okay? So again, if you're not using Dremio's integrated version of Nessie, you can always deploy your own Nessie server to get these benefits, okay? And it's supported by many engines like Spark, Dremio, Flink, Presto, Trino, uh, all support connections to, to Nessie. Um, so that's the story of Nessie. Then there's the Hive Metastore. So Hive Metastore is the standard for a long time for how you track metadata, your tables on your data lake. So you can use the Hive Metastore as an Apache iceberg uh, catalog. It is not, this is a pretty easy win if you already have a Hive Metastore that you're running. So you can just kind of move right into it using your existing Hive Metastore. If you don't have one, then going out of your way to deploy one, probably maybe not the best way to go. But again, if you have one, this becomes sort of the you know le path of least resistance. If you're in the AWS ecosystem, then AWS Glue, the AWS Glue catalog can track iceberg tables, can be a catalog for iceberg. Okay, and the cool thing is that it interrops with you know other uh, AWS services uh, such as like Redshift, Athena, whatnot. So if you're using those services, this oftentimes is a pretty um, again path of least resistance. Although again, as far as its connectivity with things outside of AWS becomes a little bit different. So then again, with any catalog, you want to kind of take a look at what the level of support is. Um, eventually, again, probably, well, I'll, I'll, get, I'll get there eventually about the standardization of it. And then there's Hadoop catalog, which the name of the catalog is not my favorite, but the idea is that it means the, it's a file system catalog. It means 
you're not using a catalog. There is no mechanism. Instead, you're just writing the files to your file storage system, which could be Hadoop, but it could also be S3, ADLS, whatever file system. But in this case, the way it's tracked, since there is no catalog, is that generally there's going to be a file called version hint.txt that's created in the folder with your files. And basically, that is going to contain the name of the current metadata file. So every time you update the table, you then update that version hint.txt. This does have some potential concurrency risks because basically, since you are updating that version hint.txt, um, there aren't the same level of update guarantees on some object storage providers that there is in others. You know, again, on, on Hadoop, you're fine. But on an object storage, you might have some situations where, again, two people could try to update that file and you get inconsistencies uh, if you have a lot of concurrent rights. So if you're planning to have concurrent rights, chances are you don't want to do Hadoop Catalog. It's, a gr it's probably the easiest way to get started. It's great for learning about Iceberg, but not the way I would go into production for Iceberg. Now, then there's, again, there's a lot of different catalog choices. JDBC, the JDBC catalog literally means anything that supports a JDBC connection um, can pretty much be used as a catalog, so any database, and it'll just basically create a table that tracks your tables. Um, there's a DynoDB catalog. There's an ECS catalog. If you're working with Dell ECS, there's a Snowflake catalog. Uh, they've released their, their Snowflake feature, uh, their Iceberg features. Uh, then there's the REST catalog catalog interface. Now, let me talk about this one for a second, because oftentimes I think a lot of people have a hard time fully appreciating what this is. So what the REST catalog interface is, it's the idea is to standardize all this. So as you can see, like, you know, there's a lot that goes into choosing a catalog. So ideally, instead of having to worry about, hey, not only what features does a catalog have, but does it connect to all my tools? The idea behind the REST catalog is to create one interface that any tool can adopt that all catalogs can plug into. Okay, so essentially what it is, it's a spec there are connectors built to support that specification of a REST API. And if a catalog implements that REST API, they can use that connector. So instead of having to wait for custom connectors for your preferred catalog, if it supports the REST catalog connector, it'll just connect to any tool that supports it. Um, you know, which is a growing number of tools. Again, it's still early days, but the idea is that that's meant to be sort of the standard interface. So that way everyone can create all the catalogs they want. But instead of having to create a bunch of connectors for every catalog, every every catalog can connect to every tool through sort of a standard interface. Um, cool. Now, far as the REST catalog interface goes, right now there's only a few catalogs that have uh, adopted it. Um, again, early days, so that would be Tabular. Okay, Tabular, the company created by the, the creators of Apache Iceberg. Uh, Unity Catalog, that's the Databricks catalog. And Gravitino, which is a open source catalog that's meant for cataloging other things other than just iceberg tables, but allows you to have to use that interface for exposing iceberg tables uh, along with the other things that it tracks. Now, switching between catalogs can be pretty easy because now there's a reg register table method on the catalog class. So you can just sit there and say, hey, refer to whatever the latest metadata.json is and register that table with the catalog of your choice. Um, this has actually been built into the Spark procedures. Uh, so overall, again, moving between catalogs isn't isn't too hard. You can find the CLI tool for register table actually as part of the Nessie project. So you'd go to the Nessie repository and you can find that tool there that makes it easy for you to just use through through a command line tool, pass the settings for catalog A and the, the settings for catalog B, and then it'll just move over all those references. So that way, going forward, you just use catalog B to refer to those same tables. So um, with that, hopefully this gives you a nice breakdown on the story about catalogs in Apache Iceberg as a whole to make it easier to kind of understand and making this decision and working through this, 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 this piece. Definitely one of the harder pieces for people to think through, but uh, I'll see y'all later. Have a great day and enjoy.